Hi everyone! As the list of all the new features in Krita 5 is pretty much known by now, I think it's a good time to do a video of everything new I know about it. I'll start with what's always the most awaited by me, new features for brush creation. And this time both of the main brush engines got some serious stuff. Pixel Engine, the one used by the majority of the brush presets, used to have only two texturing modes for influencing the alpha. Multiply, that made some regions less opaque, and Subtract, which was making them fully transparent. This new release brings 12 new texturing modes. Overlay and Height are the new equivalents of the current two pattern modes, but unlike their previous versions, allow to achieve the full texturing range much easier than before. For fully opaque ones, Hard Mix seems to work a bit better, while Color Dodge can create this very subtle look that adds this nice softness to a brush. I also really like what happens when you use some of these new modes with color shifting mechanics. In a single stroke you can go back to a certain area and there will be a distinction between low and high pressure. This ease of creating different texture coverage means you can sometimes use it instead of opacity to create color transitions. The second main brush engine received even more love. The new smudging algorithm, while creating the same outcome as before, works up to two times faster. The biggest difference is that now RGBA brush tips, known from the Pixel Engine, can be used here as well, which for me fixes the problem of the smudging outcome getting blurry. If that's not enough for you, you can go to the Texture tab and see that all the new texturing modes can be used here as well. Ironically, the feature that required the most work and that will have the most long-term influence is the one that you are most likely to miss at a first glance. The system responsible for holding all the resources like brushes tips, textures and so on was rewritten from scratch. While it's not that catchy as all the other changes, you can still notice it in bugs related to saving, deleting, modifying of brushes and tags being gone now. Krita startup should also be a bit faster and the program itself should use less RAM. Let's move on to the thing that we will notice much easier. Changes in the interface. The starting screen elements are now aligned better. The color wheel by default uses a background color of a docker, but can be changed to any color you like. The toolbar's white line is finally gone, while buttons are now unifiedly borderless, leaving the icons a bit bigger. Sliders, apart from right-clicking to write a value, control-clicking to round it, and shift-clicking to pick it more precisely, allows you to drag vertically to influence it less without pressing any buttons. You can still hold shift to get this super precise selection though. This goes really well with the powerful angle selector that allows to control click to run the value and double click to reset the selector to zero. I'm also really happy that it eventually made its way to right click pop-up, making the changes in brush rotation so much more intuitive. Gradient editor, used in gradient map for instance, got reworked too. What's best here though is that the image finally updates without confirmation. Right-click pop-up can hold up to 45 brush presets now, while you can change the size of its both parts, which can be quite useful for making it look well on 4K screens and adjusting it to your needs. You can also change the default triangle to the selector you normally use. On Windows, floating dockers no longer use the system top bar, so they look like on Linux, while on Linux the file dialog can finally display document previews. Brush editor can now be displayed as a dialog and placed on a separate monitor, reducing the need to constantly open and close it between brush modifications. Apart from that, you may notice some new icons here and there, but what's the most important for me in terms of the interface is how good it looks with my dark theme without any changes needed. So the theme customization tutorial I made is still up to date. Now let's move on to the tweaks and changes in the existing tools. As a transformation used to render as a semi-transparent image on top of the canvas, now you get the actual preview that takes into account layer position in the layer stack, blending mode and alpha inheritance. It means you can properly see transferred image behind other layers with proper clipping and blending. It works for all the transformation modes and transform masks. This single feature makes the tool more performance heavy though, but you can disable it in the settings and go back to how it used to work before, if your computer can't withstand it. If you pick a canvas option in a crop tool, you'll be able to resize the canvas without losing any image data outside it. Assistant tool 
received a new two-point perspective assistant that feels much easier to manage than placing separate vanishing points. The new addition to all of the instances is a limit assistant to area option that enables creating a rectangle in which it's displayed. That's quite useful for drawing a comic or concept board with multiple images in one canvas, or just making it look cleaner without displaying the rulers outside the canvas. Rectangle and elliptical selection tools, apart from free modes with Ctrl, Shift and Alt, now enable the use of Ctrl and Alt at once to rotate the selection. A really nice new feature is a time-lapse recorder. It saves your whole canvas as a series of JPG images on a specified interval if there are any changes made. If you have FFmpeg installed, you can then export a video out of them with Krita. This means you get a really nice time-lapse video you can post on social media or analyze to find areas for process improvement. Using OBS or other external recorders still may be needed if you want a real-time video with Krita interface visible. But for normal painting sessions, a system that keeps track of different documents and uses very little storage and performance resources is just enough. The best thing about it is that you can enable automatic recording in its docker, so soon you can forget about that you're being recorded and don't feel the pressure of drawing with the audience. Pressing Ctrl Enter will activate the new search dialog that gives fast access to all Krita features. You can use it to activate a tool, a layer, or search for any action that can be hidden in the bar on the top. There's a new file format called KRZ, which is a Krita document that's better suitable for archiving files. They take longer to save and open than CarAA and don't have a preview, but should take less space on a disk. And that's all I know about the upcoming release. I hope I haven't missed too much. As you can see, it's a big one and for me it feels really impressive that a team of just a few people with such limited resources managed to make so many big changes. I'm really sorry I didn't talk anything about the new storyboard docker and changes to the animation tools. Especially the latter received a ton of changes like keyframes, new timeline and animatable transform masks that enable easy to achieve parallax and camera movement. I'm just not an animator myself and wouldn't do those features a full justice. If you have some spare cash, consider making a recurring or single donation on Krita page to make some difference. Also, if you watch this video before the official release, consider trying out the beta to make sure everything works well. Thanks for watching and have a great time with the new Krita no matter if you start using it since the first beta or prefer to wait once it's released. Cheers!